Pharmaceuticals are helping us lead healthier and longer lives. There are pills, syrups or shots for almost every known health concern. However, there is growing evidence that pharmaceuticals also make our planet sick in devious ways when not managed properly. Humans and animals consume over 100,000 tons of pharmaceutical products every year. That's about the volume of 500 blue whales. Chemical compounds from these drugs enter the environment in various ways. Through wastewater discharged from manufacturing facilities, through human and animal excreta and farming practices, through improper disposal of unused or expired medicines by consumers. Some of these compounds don't easily break down through natural processes like sunlight. Antibiotics, hormones and pain relievers fall in this category. They persist in the air, water and soil environment for long periods and become environmentally persistent pharmaceutical pollutants or EPPPs. Because of their several human and ecological impacts, EPPPs have been recognized as an emerging policy issue. Before we inspect the impacts of pharma pollution, let's look at where the pollution comes from. Ironically, one of the drug components that becomes particularly harmful to the environment is the very thing that makes medicines work, the active pharmaceutical ingredients or APIs. Imagine a cake. The main ingredient is flour. APIs are that ingredient for these medicines. They affect the biological processes of the consumer in a way that impacts their bodily functions to help fight off sickness or reduce pain. There are over 4,000 APIs used by the pharmaceutical industry to make medicines for 8.1 billion people and even more livestock. Due to unsafe manufacturing processes, usage and improper disposal, these APIs are now in our drinking water, sewage, rivers, oceans and soil. Globally, over 600 different APIs have been detected in our environment. Anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen and diclofenac have been found in the Kaveri River. Blood pressure medication like metropolol has been found in coastal waters near Maharashtra and azithromycin caffeine diclofenac in six crucial rivers. Sometimes the quantities are harmless, but other times the impacts are significant. Psychiatric drugs found in marine and freshwater habitats have been shown to alter the social and foraging behavior of fish. Endocrine disrupting drugs affect the reproductive ability of fish and even increase the risk of breast cancer in humans. One of the most significant impacts of increased use of antimicrobials is the creation of microscopic Frankenstein's monsters, antimicrobial resistance or AMR. AMR occurs when bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites change over time and no longer respond to medicines, making infections harder to treat. The many pharmaceutical companies that manufacture antibiotics don't treat their effluent which means that the effluent coming out from their plant contains antibiotics. These antibiotics then make their way into natural water bodies, including lakes and ponds and even rivers. And when they are in these lakes and ponds, they're killing off sensitive bacteria and they are allowing only resistant bacteria to survive, which then means that we are creating antibiotic resistance uh, in natural reservoirs. So clearly this is not a sustainable practice because uh, the manufacture of antibiotics is itself contributing to the destruction of the curing ability of antibiotics. AMR is so serious that the WHO lists it among the top 10 threats to global health. Nearly 1.27 million people died globally in 2019 due to antibiotic-resistant infections. In India, over 56,000 children die in their first month each year due to AMR. The country ranks third worldwide for pharmaceutical production by volume, producing 60% of the world's vaccines and 20% of generic medicines. But while attempting to become the pharmacy of the world, the industry has made its rivers, oceans and people sicker. In Hyderabad, one of the world's largest bulk drug-making hubs, the treated wastewater of one factory had concentrations of a vital antibiotic strong enough to treat 44,000 people. Studies point out that regulating India's pharmaceutical industry should be a priority. We can address it by following global norms for good manufacturing practice and not allowing untreated effluent to flow into uh, natural water bodies. But many companies in India continue this practice. Now they all think of it as just a cost for their manufacturing, therefore they don't want to take on the cost 
and they continue doing what they're doing. So it's both an enforcement issue, but it's also what you would call an appropriate behavior or ethical behavior on the part of, of antibiotic manufacturers.